been a well-documented and publicized debate. How can the governments best secure North American trade and our economy while continuing to service the needs of residents in North America's most important border cities, Windsor and Detroit? It's a tale of broken promises, millions of dollars, and backed up traffic. There are 17 stoplights between Montreal and Miami, 17 lights that stop the flow of goods, and 16 of them are in Windsor. It's completely inefficient. What you want is freeway to freeway access. For every truck, it's $65 an hour in operating costs. That's for your fuel, the unproductive time of the driver, and that sort of thing. But it pales in terms of the impact on the overall economy. Those traffic lights should have been gone long ago. In 2002, the Ontario government made a deal with Ottawa. The government would invest hundreds of millions of dollars in improving the Canadian Gateway, with the aim of providing a seamless highway-to-highway -highway border crossing. Well, the money was spent, but the traffic lights remain. The government even announced a $300 million border infrastructure fund. To address immediate congestion pressures on the Windsor side of the Windsor-Detroit Gateway. We had a plan that Canada... Windsor, Detroit, Ontario, Michigan, federal government of Canada, federal government in the West, they all join in and support the Gateway Project and the tying of the federal highways to the Ambassador Bridge. Part of the plan was to remove all international truck traffic on Huron Church within five years. And yet, eight years later, the trucks keep on driving through the city. Now money was spent on a pedestrian bridge, grade separations, and work on the 401. But creating a direct highway-to-highway -highway border connection is far from complete. And in the U.S., the Gateway Project, which was intended to create a similar connection, has resulted in years of legal wrangling. All northbound I-75 traffic headed to the Ambassador Bridge would carry all the traffic right through here and behind you onto the plaza of the Ambassador Bridge. But instead, MDOT has blocked this ramp. Instead, drivers are forced to meander through a makeshift road while the Ambassador Bridge Company and the state fight in court over construction of the duty-free shop, gas pumps, and the completion of the $220 million project. But the Gateway Project is impossible for us to finish without the traffic being on these ramps because if we were to finish it, we would have to block all access to the Ambassador Bridge and no one could get to Canada. To finish, Marin says, they need those ramps to open. God willing, we'll work it out with them. But I think that they're hurting the public. They're damaging everyone. In the meantime, lawsuits and broken promises on both sides of the border continue, while the traffic just keeps on trucking. And while commuters and travelers may be inconvenienced by these legislative and legal traffic jams, entire neighborhoods are arguably the greatest victims. Tomorrow, we take a look at broken neighborhoods on both sides of the border and investigate why residents are being played as pawns.